We are continuing to prepare for the Seder night. We started off <coughs> recounting and, and listing the number of mitzvot. Tauraita, the Rabbanan, which uh, gives us somewhat of a structure. How we put together all the mitzvot in one package, that's what we're going to learn about, Bezrat Hashem, today. Now, I said the other day that the uh, Erev Pesach is more of a festival than any other Erev Yom Tov. Who remembers why? Because we have two, um, two no, no, no. That's a good guess, wait, wait, wait. I but that's that. not why the, uh, we were talking about it yesterday. You weren't here. That's right, because yeah. it was the day in which the uh, sacrifice had to be uh, slaughtered in the temple. Absolutely, you got it. And... Um, Therefore, it still has some semblance of festivity. But of course, you're right, Moshe, that <clears throat> you're in the right direction. There's a, there's a lot of things to do, and we have to get rid of the chametz. But also, third reason why it's really special is because uh, every Shabbat you have to prepare for Shabbat, and every Yom Tov you have to prepare for Yom Tov. But Pesach, there are preparations that are extra special that you have to do for the Seder. Uh, because the Seder is special more than any other Yom Tov and, Pes- and, and, and Shabbat. And can we want to take a guess? What's the most important thing that you should have you and your children do on Erev Pesach to prepare for the Seder? If you've ever been to a Jewish home uh, on Erev Pesach, not just for Pesach. You the question, what, can we do to prepare for Erev Pesach? what is perhaps the most important thing that you can do? To prepare for the Seder on Erev Pesach. Uh, it's a good good guess. It's important. You're, you're really, you don't have much to eat. You don't have... Uh, something about being happy? No. Well, ultimately... So what kind of preparations? What's the most important preparation? For the Seder night itself. For the Seder night. What's the most important preparation for the Seder night itself? You say the food. Okay. Do I hear any other answers? Chametz has got to get rid of. We talked about that. Yeah. yeah. That, okay, that's what else? Okay. Something else. Preparation for the seder itself. Um, so we have to put up dishes, like very good fine yeah, dishes, yeah. but not too fancy. Why not too fancy? As fancy as you uh, can. Go for it. Why not? Or no gold ones at least, or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. I, gold, gold is Shabbat. good for me. Shabbat I don't know. Is the gold standard, and then everything else comes down. Shabbat is gold standard. I don't know. I think uh, on Pesach yeah. we take out our finest even more than on a regular that's Shabbat. Why we don't, that's why we don't. That's why some people don't dress in white on Yom Kippur because it might be like or lessen the importance of. It's interesting. I'm not sure about that. I'm not Shabbat sure that's a universal uh, approach. Uh, you know, Sh- okay. Yom Kippur is called Shabbat Shabbaton, and uh, Shabbat. Look, I was told that Shabbat is the holiest out of every single holiday. No, I understand. I, 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 yeah, Shabbat is very holy. I'm not uh, no question about that. But uh, as I said, Yom Kippur is called Shabbat Shabbaton, and it's. It's it's usually, more important. Yeah, it is. It's, <laughs> it's one a year. Shabbat is every week. But that's that. That's my point. That because Shabbat is every week, we should treat it with more importance. You think it of the other way, like I used to think, but I'm not sure that there's. Um, listen, Yom Kippur is usually said it's the holiest day of the year. Uh, okay. Okay. I understand. I understand. Uh, it's debatable, but let's go back to our topic at hand. The right. topic at hand is Pesach, and era of Pesach. You have to prepare, no question. We've got a few good suggestions. You've not hit on the one, and you know how I always, I always like to do things with a wink and with a smile. I'm telling you the most important, practical advice to give you for era of Pesach, for you and the children. To prepare the Haggadah, to make it. A... You're getting warm. To make the Haggadah. How are you going to do that? Dress up. I don't how know. would you prepare? Uh, All good ideas. Starting the good. That's what that's what he said. No. (laughs) Okay. Well, it is connected to the what you're feeling right now, and that's your drowsiness. That's it. (laughs) There you go. Moshe got it. He never would have guessed it. uh, I waited long enough. Usually, the seder goes late, and uh, the worst thing is if the kids fall asleep, or if you fall asleep. Because you work so hard during the day that you just don't have energy when it comes to the nighttime. We have to prepare, set up, set up all the, all the uh, uh, conditions so that you have the best experience of your life.
at night, in the evening. And uh, sometimes taking a nap the day before is, is uh, critical. Okay, anyways, let's see inside. There's a few other things to, uh, that can... Uh, uh, preparing for the Seder. Let's read it. Page 210. David, you're right next to me, so... 210, number 2. You start. Um, it's, uh, section 2, right? Yeah. Okay. Preparing for the Seder. As noted, one of the two key objectives of the Seder is to uh, transmit <coughs> the tradition of the Exodus to our children. In order to keep younger children alert, we do many unusual things at the Seder. We dip vegetables in liquid twice, wash our hands twice, and give the appearance of beginning the meal before suddenly starting to recite the Haggadah. In addition, the mitzvot of eating matzah, drinking four cups of wine, um, reclining, also prompt the children to ask, why is this night different from all other nights? The sages also instruct uh, one to give nuts and candy to small children at the beginning of the Seder, so they uh, see yet another change and ask, why is this night different? It is good to give them small candies throughout the Seder, keeping them alert and happy. Chocolate chips. You heard it here first. Go ahead. An effort is made to buy new clothes for the children and the entire household before Pesach, in order to make everybody happy. Indeed, the mitzvah to be joyful applies to each of the uh, three pilgrimage festivals, Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot. And it is therefore a mitzvah to buy clothes and jewelry for the women and girls, give young children candy and nuts, and serve meat and wine to men at each festival. However, we are even more careful about buying new clothes for Pesach because wearing them for the Siddha evokes a special sense of excitement for this exalted night. <coughs> It is proper to set the table and arrange the Seder plate before er evening, so that Kiddush can be recited as soon as possible after Maori prayer. In this way, there is no wasting of the precious time when the children are still alert and can still participate in reciting the, the Haggadah, eating the Matzah and drinking the wine. However, Kiddush should not be recited before the Seid Seid Hakohavim Seid. So then, Seid. Seid. Like Tate, no, the going out. It's, yeah, it's a Hebrew word. Yeah, it's not uh, yeah, Yiddish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the appearance of the three distant sons. Because Kiddush must be recited at the time when matzah can be eaten, the night of the 15th at the sun. Moreover, the Kiddush wine is the first of the four cups, and one must drink all four cups at night. When setting the table, one should put out comfortable chairs so that participants will be able to recline. Ideally, the table should be set with the finest silverware and dishes. During the course course of, of the year, course of the year, we refrain from setting the table with overly attractive utensils in remembrance of the temple's destruction. But on Shabbat and holidays, we do everything we can to enhance the table's beauty. On the Seder night, it is a mitzvah to beautify the table with the absolute uh, best with the absolute best utensils, as it expresses freedom and joy. I think this is, this is, it's so hard to quantify the feeling, and I'm privileged to have grown up in a religious home. My parents were not rabbis, <laughs> by no means, and, uh, but, you know, the traditional religious home. And uh, almost every Pesach, I think I got uh, something new, new, some new clothing, and the night before, good morning, the night before the, the Seder, you could tell something was going. We did have fancy dishes, fancy serving dishes that we would use only on Pesach. And there's really, you get a feeling of the specialness of the night in, in, a, in a way that's hard to describe, really. So um, it's these little things that you, um, you pick up when you're, uh, you know, father, it's, it's passed down in tradition. And it's hard to quantify, but uh, the the point is, we everything comes to towards this this pinnacle, the height, and and uh, everybody's wearing their new clothes, and the finest dishes are out. It's it's a it's a magical moment, the, the night of the seder. Uh, about this reclining, it's very interesting. We're going to talk about it a little bit, a little bit later. Good morning. But the reclining, we're going to see that uh, it's defined that halacha is leaning to your left. You know that, not leaning to the right. Why? I actually don't know. Uh, what? It's, um, why? 
because it has something to do with the... With the um, that's right. The, that's right. The, the, the biological explanation is that the, the esophagus, the, the food the pipe, is on yeah. the left, uh-huh. and if you lean to the right, then you the, the food goes down the wrong pipe, yeah. and... Uh, it's more likely more, to choke. Or, right, you're more likely to choke. Uh, However, um, uh, really, what is this whole leaning business? To us, it's strange, especially you guys don't have armchairs. Oh, um, what is it? Uh, yeah, I Matt, think, does it have to do anything about the korban? Where we lean on the korban? No, I don't think so. I don't think so it's connected. Yeah. That's right. That, that's right. You could even so uh, maybe you saw a movie once of like the right. Roman times. So they would lay down on on low cots, like right. on mattresses, fainting chairs. huh? Fainting chairs, and they'd be sort of spread out, right. you know, with their feet up like this, then lean, and then eating with one hand, right? So they're leaning on one hand and eating with the other. So that's leaning to the left. Of course, we sit on chairs now. No, we're not on cots, so it's a little bit. Uh, not so comfortable even to like, if you're sitting on a chair, leaning to the left, uh, <laughs> I just want to sit up straight. The chairs are not built for leaning to the left. But we, the, 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 the best suggestion, second best suggestion, is what you do, I, um, I'm in a chair which has arms. If you have arms, it's no problem. You can lean on the armchair, uh, on the armrest. Uh, but if you don't have uh, a chair with armrests, so the best thing to do is take your chair, and put it sideways, and then you sit like this, and you lean to your left, and you drink. You drink your cup of wine. We're going to see uh, at which uh, points during the seder it's critical. <coughs> if you don't lean while you drink the wine, for example, or when you eat the matzah, it's not kosher. You have to redo it. It's a little more complicated when you do things wrong and you have to redo it. Try not to do that. So be aware when you have to recline. Some people recline the whole meal. If it's comfortable for you, it makes more sense. I just want to give you the best tip, and then I'll take all your questions, okay? <laughs> the best tip. So one tip is this. It's a pretty good tip. Uh, you know, and I remember it's always exciting uh, as a kid, again, uh, that, you know, re- you get to bring your pillow to the table. So you put in a pillow. It's, uh, it's uh, for reclining. Um, if you have a, a, an armrest, so then it uh, makes it more comfortable, and there's a pillow there. So it's always... Uh, exciting to have pillows at the table. You don't usually bring pillows to the table. Mm-hmm. So, um, but the, the ideal, perhaps, uh, we've been doing this for a number of years now, is the idea is you're supposed to be uh, like kings. You're supposed to be right. comfortable. And, you know, uh, the kings sit in a comfortable way. Right. Today, many, many uh, people have promoted this idea that w- when we want to sit comfortably, <coughs> how do we sit? Just like, oh, like you know, lazy boy. Maybe like this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, true, true, true. But it's much more comfortable. I think David's on the right track. He says, you sit on a lazy boy. You sit on a recliner. Or you sit on a couch. Uh, right. As a matter of fact, what we've been doing for many years is that we say the Seder, the Haggadah at least, when we get to the meal, we go to the table and sit on chairs because it's more comfortable to eat with cutlery and all that. But the first half of the Seder, we're going to see it's the, the, the major port, portion of all the discussions we sit in the living room on the couches, mm-hmm. you know, and I do have a lazy boy, actually. <laughs> and there's other recliners and so forth. And, uh, and if there's not enough room on the couches, we bring uh, poofs, like, you know, those, those uh, mm-hmm. sitting chairs that uh, uh, move to your body and all sorts of mattresses on the floor. It's, um, it's definitely a change. It'll have, make the kids ask questions. Why are we... <laughs> why are we having kiddush in the living room instead of at the table? And you know why? Uh, but it's and it's a lot of fun. If it's uh, some people, you know, and perhaps they're older, they're more comfortable in, in a regular chair. Of course, they can could always bring a chair into the living room. But and the, our living room is right next to the dining room. You'll see it Bezat Hashem on Thursday if you haven't yet. And um, so yeah, we 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 do our seder, and that's leans itself, lends itself. You get it? Lends itself to leaning. Um, because especially if you're on the left-hand side of the couch, you just have a, you know, you have an armrest. And if you have a, a, a recliner, you have to make sure you go a little bit to your left, even though, but it's, the point is to be relaxed, to be showing your opulence and your riches and your freedom. And um, I think that's, uh, there's a lot to be said for that. It's also more comfortable. <laughs> if you want to have a long, long <laughs> session to be sitting in a hard chair for Four hours, you know, your touch is going to hurt in the end. So uh, sitting on the couches is, is uh, the, the best tip I can give you. Uh, but it's not up to you always if you're a guest, if you're not running the Seder, you know. 
Um, as long as you turn the chair to the side or in some way you manage to lean on your left, that's going to be considered kosher reclining. We'll get into all the details more uh, after that. But these are just enhancements of the, you know, going after the idea. The idea is to, to express that you're free and you're comfortable and you're, you're celebrating the way kings celebrate. Why not use the couches? That's what they're there for. Now I'll take questions. Somebody wanted to... Uh, yeah, David? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll go around okay, the room. Yeah. Mr. Rav uh, mentioned that there, is, uh, there are points in the, during the Haggadah where one has to lean to the left. The left, yes, and yes, yes. So it might be, depending on which um, chair or couch, whatever you sit, maybe there's no... Uh, uh, armrest. Armrest, yeah. For some reason, it's going to be... Uh, there was a question, okay, how, how, what, what to do then? Like, uh, so I said, turn uh, the chair, turn the chair. The chair and then Just move the chair to the, to the left and lean on the back. Yeah, and if you don't have a back, uh, if there's somebody sitting next to you, ask his permission, lean on him. In fact, in fact, if you have a, a, a row, imagine a row of yeshiva boys that are on a bench with no back and no armrests, each one's leaning on the other. You can see a train of each one leaning on each other. That's kosher. It's fine. It's, okay, David, you wanted to ask or no? Yeah. Okay, Michael. Yeah, like, but is it cool that in the, the Yemenite custom, they still use like those kind of chairs? I don't know chairs, but those things that you lay and the legs, right? I imagine some people do. I, I know that some people really like to sit on the floor. They find it more comfortable sitting on a couch. It's foreign to them. So there's different cultures. Uh, a floor and a little mattress is fine, you know. So some people do that. Whoever does that, it's fine. Yeah, for sure. What's about old people? It's easier to move the table. Don't know. If they, maybe you grow up getting used to it and uh, you, somehow they help you up. Uh, someone will help you up and down. I don't know. Yes, Nathan. <laughs> My question is, is this really why we lean? Like, does why we lean to show freedom, yes. That's oh, the reason. Because we're like kings now? Well, because we're, we're like kings, kings, exactly, to show our freedom. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it goes with the, uh, the fine wine and the, and the uh, fine dishes yeah. and the new clothing. All, all that is uh, part, of yeah. the, uh, part of the, uh, what's it called? Uh, when you put on a play, it's called of the, you know, the background of a play. The set, it's part of the set and the, uh, what else is on, on the set? Somebody's in charge of, what else? It's called, that somebody's in charge of the... Um, you know, the background of you setting up the, 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 the stage of the play. Be cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know what I mean. I can't think of the word. There's a word I, I can't think of right now, but it's not important. Yeah. Okay. Yes, this is all part so of it. it doesn't have anything to do with the leaning on the korban? I don't think so. The leaning on the korban is with your hands, and you press down on the head of the korban. Okay. We don't have a korban nowadays, so you, kind of you know. I sometimes give a bracha to my children, but I don't lean on them. No, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, sometimes we remember things. Maybe if you think of it later, you'd let me know. Yes, David. I imagine you could say, uh, uh, Abba, why, why are you leaning so heavily on our uh -huh. I used to say your bracha. Uh, <laughs> but um, the question is, is, you said about leaning for eating matzah. Mm -hmm. I leaning for the wine. I've never heard, I've never oh heard no! Of it means you've never filled the matzah properly. You probably it's probably kosher after uh, after the fact, but ideally for the matzah you have to be leaning while you eat as well. As for the, uh, the the secret, and there are a lot of you know stage directions. We're going to go through the exact uh, seder, and you'll see that you know now pick the, up the cup. Now cover the matzahs. Uncover the matzahs. Put down the cup. There's so many different instructions. The key to understanding this one about leaning is that we lean whenever we're trying to express freedom. Now, we spoke about <coughs> at length of the major themes of the Haggadah that there's two parts to the story. We have to tell the story of the affliction and the uh, sorrow and the, the, the uh, poor beginnings of the Jewish people. And then from there, we move to the, to the good stuff. So whenever we're actually talking about the celebration and the good stuff, that's when you're going to have a mitzvah to lean. So, for example, matzah. A lot of people get it confused, but we already spoke about it uh, in last class. Pesach, matzah, and maror. The matzah represents the food which we ate when we came out. It's, it's a food of redemption. It's a food of faith. We talked about that. The matzah has many, many uh, symbols to it, symbolisms associated with it. But the primary one is that the matzah is the bread of our redemption. So it's a... Symbol of redemption, that's why we have to lean for it. The four cups, of course. Who drinks four cups of wine? They're there to express the redemption, that we are rich, that we're like kings who drink lots of wine. So yeah, for sure, the four level, four, uh, you know, I have at home uh, 28 
expl explanations of why we drink four cups. Oh. 28 is the gematria of the word kos. Oh. <laughs> Um, no, it's Kaf Vav, it's 24, 26, 26, Kos, uh, the Samich is 60, I don't know what that's for, but um, that, that, there's another gematria for that. Anyways, uh, there are many reasons why we drink four cups, but the simple thing is that the rabbis wanted you to celebrate, like a king, you should be like a king, everybody should be like a king. We'll see that there's one cup for every major mitzvah, it's very interesting. Besides the matzah, the, other th the wine and the matzah, the other things, which we, should, we should be meaning for each of the symbolic things? Then? Is that so that's what I was going to say. The, 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 uh, to prove my point that it's only the happy parts that we have to recline for, is that for the mitzvah of eating maror, we don't recline. We don't recline. Exactly. Actually says in the Haggadah, here do not recline. This is an eating which we should not, because what does it symbolize? The bitterness of slavery. So we're not going to act like uh, like kings when we're recalling the slavery. We're going to sit up straight and not uh, not have that reclining for for, for the maror. So that's a good question. When you put the korech together, the matzah and the maror, so which overrides? The halacha is we do recline for the korech. Yes, you must. Uh, the korech is a uh, commemoration of the. Sandwich, remember that sandwich we talked about? The mutton, lettuce, and tomato sandwich? No, the, the, uh, the Korban Pesach sandwich okay. that had the maror on and the kor So the Korban Pesach and the matzah, I guess you could say, it's, uh, uh, two to one against the maror. <laughs> and so it was, it's a, it's a, it's a way to fulfill the, the uh, eating of the Korban Pesach. Now we have only a commemoration of it. Um, we do lean. Uh, the, the, the entire... Uh, eating that sandwich is supposed to be to commemorate the redemption from Egypt. Even though there's a little bit of bitterness in it, it's, uh, you, you have to lean for the, all those things. And the afikomen, we eat it again. We eat the matzah again at the end of the meal. The afikomen, you have to lean. And the four cups of wine, you have to lean. Uh, it becomes funny for the few, few, first few Shabbatot after Pesach, after we sit down and we, we make Kiddush, Baruch Hashem HaKadosh HaShabbat, I always say to the kids, or they say to me, till they say, Abba, stop being silly already. So don't forget to lean. Whenever you say, because whenever you drink the four cups, don't forget to lean, don't forget to lean. You know, each time you say it four times that night, five times that night, six times that night, seven times you have to uh, lean when you're eating or drinking, and you have to remember. There is a, there is a uh, chumrah, stringency that some people do, uh, to lean for the entire uh, story, telling of the story. Well, not the entire, except for the bad parts. The lean for this when you're talking about the ten plagues. Lean when you're uh, thanking Hashem for giving you the Torah. Lean for that entire first section where we're actually telling the story. It's a story of redemption. And singing the Hallel. You should lean. But, of course, it depends if it's comfortable for you. It's not an absolute uh, obligation. But the, to fulfill those eatings... Um, it is obligated, and we're going to talk more about it now. Okay, we're, let's go back to the text, page 211, number 3, the Seder plate. The other day, somebody said to me, um, you know, they felt, what are they going to do without a Seder plate? Because they were somewhere without a Seder plate. So, it's funny, the Talmud never mentions that there's a Seder plate. Right. In the day, you could go back to our picture of the Roman, uh, the Romans that are lying on their cots, on their fainting beds, and <clears throat> they have their food. What did they eat on if they're lying down on the floor? Micha, what do you say? What do you eat, uh, what do you eat on if you're lying on the floor? If you're a well, Yemenite, <laughs> you can be yeah, yeah, grape by grape, but what if you need to eat meat and you need to have more food at once? You need to have bread. So they had little tables. Little tables like, uh, you know, uh, in my day we, had, we called it a TV tray, oh, yes. right? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, it's, it's a little uh, portable, yeah. a portable little table that you can fold up. And they, when it came time to eat, they would bring in front of the people that were reclining there a little table. Again, they'd be leaning on their left and they'd take off the little table. And so that's what it means. We're going to see soon. Part of the Haggadah, it says, so you make the uh, Kiddush. And you start to having some, some vegetables and dip. It's very nice. And then it says, you take away the table. 
And then that makes the kids ask, what, what are you taking away the food for? We just started the meal. What do you take it? They really would take the table away because everybody had their own little table, their own little tray. And that is going to ask the kids, you know, because they they're, they're expecting the meal. So if you take away the table, they're going to ask questions. So nowadays, we sit at a table that's big, you know, and everybody has a plate. And in the middle, there's this thing called the Seder plate. Oh, okay. And the Seder plate, they said, some, when, when they used to take away the plate, what do we do? We cover up the Seder plate, or we take away the Seder plate. Well, it's a weird thing that it's there in the first place. You want to take it away? Okay, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't really raise the question the way the original custom did. But, you know, we have to adopt, uh, adapt with the different uh, cultures. And uh, we do... Um, but there is this idea that we put the food all together on a plate. And what food? The food we're going to eat. We put the maro there. We put the matzah there. Mm -hmm. We put the haroset there. We'll talk about it. All the different things. And, and then, it, you know, why are we bringing them to the table? Well, we're bringing them to the people. We bring the table to the people so that we can eat them. Fine, we're going to talk about them too. Tell the whole story with them, right? Pass, maybe pass some of it around. And... Um, so we tell the story with the, with the uh, objects, with the symbolic objects in front of us. Because like I said, it has to be show and tell. And then if you take that away, so that's, you know, why are you taking away our food? Even if it's strange food, I don't want you to take away our food. But uh, nowadays, as I said, it's, mo it's largely symbolic. Um, but symbols are very important. And uh, when I say symbolic, I don't mean only just something that somebody made up. Matter of fact, there's tremendous, deep... Uh, religious secrets involved with how precisely to set up the different items on the Seder plate. Where do you put the maro? Where do you put the haroset? Where do you put the egg? What's the egg there for? No? What's the egg there for? What, what else is on the Seder plate? No, no. What is the... Say, what is the, what is the there's a shank bone or some kind of a piece of meat. Nope, not life. I mean, not, we're not against life, but, but life. what does the piece of meat symbolize? Korban Pesach, exactly. And so the egg is a for the Korban Chagiga. Russell was here. He mentioned that yesterday there was a second Korban. Everybody who made uh, Ali al who came to Jerusalem, also brought a Korban so that he had what to eat. The Korban Pesach, he each had maybe one kazai each. He had a hundred people on one, on one sheep. Uh, but uh, the, then you needed to have your portion of meat. You needed to have your shawarma, right? <laughs> you need to have your swarma in your lafa, in your soft matzah. You need to have some meat. So that was a korban chagiga. So the egg is a symbol of the korban chagiga. The, 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 the meat, piece of meat, whatever it is, a bone, whatever you use, is different customs because it's just it's to commemorate the korban Pesach. But this was, in the day, this was the food that you're going to eat. You get a platter of the special foods. You get a kazait of korban Pesach, you get a kazait of maror, you get the matzah, and you get your haroset, and in the day you also had your portion of korban chagiga. So everybody had their food. And then before we eat it, of course, we talk about it, tell the story over it. And um, so since these are mitzvah objects and this, this ritual uh, setting up of the, setting the stage for these ritual objects is part of our religious service. It's not just a mitzvah to eat it. We have to talk about it. We have to place them in the proper organization there's actually a long discussion at the beginning of every uh, Haggadah. We're going to open them up soon. What do you see, usually? A picture, a diagram, about how to set up the Seder plate. Okay, so it's a, even though it's not mentioned in the Talmud, there is a special Seder plate. It's already been, it's been a few thousand years, 1,500 years since the Talmud. And the <coughs> Jewish custom has, has uh, brought this, uh, custom of making a plate with all the mitzvot on it together um, and it's a very very ancient idea as I said there's even Kabbalistic explanations about how precisely to arrange the Seder plate and just like every other mitzvah there's going to be a few different opinions what's the best way to arrange the Seder plate we're going to read that now um, if there's any questions for my introduction yes Michal so to be clear the, the egg on the Seder plate stands symbolize the second korban. Korban Chagiga, it's called Chagiga, Chagiga yes. That's what, what we brought when we were in the land, right? That's right, that's right. Commanded by Bamidbar, what's written by Bamidbar, the new laws, 
It's in the Book of Bamidbar for sure, yeah. That Korban appears in the Sefer Bamidbar. Yes, another question, Amos. We will be, uh, we will be talking about the, the meal, the, late, the last meal. What is the tradition or something? You mean the meal that we have at the Seder? We'll talk yeah. about it, sure. We will. Yeah, we will talk about it. Yes, David, yeah. Um, I assume that this is just like Shabbos, that as long as we're following the Minchag of somebody, that it's, it's, it's okay. But yes. It, you're right. Where we get closer to the rice, so it doesn't matter if there's five things on the plate or six things, or somebody adds an orange. That's that's right. There is this custom, a uh, modern custom. Uh, it's not a bad one. Is um, to add like an orange. Well, that one's actually based on false data. It turned out. Or someone will add um, a dinosaur, <laughs> or a star fruit, or just and. The kids get to, they've learned all about the, the Pesach Seder in school, and they come to the Seder and they say, why is there a dinosaur in the middle of the Seder plate? <laughs> That's exactly why, because we want to spur the children to ask questions. We do lots of strange things on the Seder. Of course, they can add the, many people uh, suggest specific items because they want to mark in this most important night of the year for, in a Jewish education, they want to make a point. Uh, many times, uh, I, I, I can't recall all these, these newfangled uh, customs. Some people want to uh, recall the oppression, right? We, we recall our oppression, the Jewish people. They want to recall the oppression of uh, Jewish women who are uh, chained to their husbands. Right? It's a social problem. One way to call attention to it is by adding something to the Seder plate. Or there's a few, it's, it's, a, it's a hook, it's a way that you can, you know, uh, further your agenda through the traditional uh, customs. I'm personally a traditionalist. I don't like having an orange <laughs> in the middle of my Seder plate or whatever strange custom, but it's not absolutely forbidden. And if you put them in the wrong order, nothing will happen. It's not, you're not violating any, <coughs> any prohibition, but the tradition is very precious. So let's read about it. Okay, let's read about it. Moshe, I'm so glad you're here yesterday. You weren't, so please read for us on page 211, the Seder plate. Number three. Okay. Uh, before the Seder, one must pre prepare the Seder plate, on which all of these special Seder foods are arranged. Setting the Seder plate is not merely to keep the foods close by and at the ready, but also because each food commemorates and emphasizes a particular idea. And we must keep all the foods in front of us to express the uniqueness of the Seder. These foods are placed on the Seder plate. Three matzo, with which we fulfill the Torah's commandments to eat matzah. We place them on the Seder plate so that we can recite the, Haggadah. the Haggadah in the presence of matzah and maror, fulfilling the verse, tell your child on that day. It is because of this that God did for me when I left Egypt which the sages interpret because of this means when matzah and maror are before you. Additionally, matzah is called lechem odir. Are you okay? Sorry. Yes. Oh, okay. No. Sorry, I was yawning. Um, which the sages... Are we boring you? <laughs> no. Go ahead. Which, which the sages, sages interpret to mean bread over which we onim, answer or say, Many things. The matzah must therefore be uncovered while we recite the Haggadah. However, out of respect for the matzah, which is the most important food on the table and over which we recite the, the Hamotzi blessing, we do not recite Kiddush while the matzah is uncovered. Therefore, we cover the matzahs during Kiddush and when we lift our wine glasses. But otherwise, they remain exposed while we recite the Haggadah. Some of the customs who separate the three matzah with the cloth, based on the writings of the Arizal. And others have a custom not to separate the matzah. Maror is the lettuce, is lettuce or horseradish. When the temple stood, there was a Torah commandment to eat maror when, with the korban pesach. But since the destruction of the temple, the mitzvah to eat maror is rabbinic. In temple times, the meat of the korban pesach was also put on the seder table. But with the temple's destruction, the seder sages. <laughs> <laughs> Tough night. You have roommates, when you have roommates like mine. Sages enacted that the two cooked foods be placed on the table, one to commemorate Paschal sacrifice and the other to commemorate the Korban Chagiga, pilgrimage sacrifices, offered on every pilgrimage festival. Customarily, the Paschal sacrifice is commemorated with a Zeroah, alluding to the fact that God redeemed us with an outstretched arm. We roast the Zeroah 
just as the Paschal sacrifice in Jerusalem. Sephardic Jews customarily use the forelong, uh, the foreleg of a lamb or goat, whereas us can also use the wing of a fowl. The Korban Chagiga is customarily commemorated with a roasted or boiled egg. Eggs are customarily served to mourners, but Zoran Chay consolingly reminds them of life's cyclical nature. At the Seder, the egg similarly reminds us that the temple will be speedily rebuilt and we will again be able to offer the Paschal and Chagiga sacrifices. Additionally, the Aram Aramaic word for egg, beya, can also refer to prayer petition, alluding to our petitioning God to redeem us once again. The custom in most communities is to not eat the zeroa on the Seder night. We also place karpas in either vinegar or salt water on the Seder plate. Karpas is a vegetable that we eat before reciting the Haggadah, the, before eating the Haggadah, before reciting the Haggadah. It is dipped in vinegar or salt water, both to make it tastier and to create the need for additional hand washing which causes the children to ask more questions. We place karotzes on the Seder plate as well. Karotzes allowed alludes to the clean mortar our forefathers made when they were enslaved in Egypt. <coughs> in the Maror, we dip it in the karotzes. Wine is not placed on the Seder plate because it is a drink, not a food. Okay, so I just want to explain one thing. Uh, you can see, so basically we have all the foods that we're going to eat, that we're going to talk about, that we're going to use, on the Seder plate, the ritual foods. Uh, so we have, let's list them. The matzah. Matzah. The maror. The maror. The karpas. The karpas. The korban. The zecher, the korban. The zeroa, it's called. The zeroa. Yeah. Then we have the haroset. Haroset. With the zeroa, though, you forgot something. Korban hagiga. Well, zecher, the korban hagiga, which is an egg. Right? And the maror, right? Uh, so, so uh, lots of lots of stuff we have. Matzah, maror. There's more. Um, uh, we said zeroa, right? This is like pesach matzah maror, right? But then we add the beitzah, and then we have the karpas. Karpas is a special vegetable which we're going to eat, and you can add so together with the karpas, you can put the the uh, the salt water, the mei melach, it's in Hebrew. Mm, okay, salt, salt, salt water, water, yeah. Also reminds us uh, to the tears. Of the have. tears, that's right, that's right, that's right. So these are all the things. Now, how do you arrange them? That's already discussed in the next section. But before that, he discussed, uh, I want to talk about the sports. I love sports. Wait, What's the best Jewish sport? Batching. Good, close, but no cigar. On the night of the Seder night, what's the, uh, you got to be sharp to make sure it's done just so. And we're, yeah, yeah. After four months. Close, good, it's a good game, but what else, what other game is there? I'm calling it a game, it's not really a game, it's part of the tradition. You see all these stage uh, instructions, I want to explain them. He explained them briefly, but I want to make sure you all got it. He says, on the one hand, we have to say the Haggadah when the matzahs are uncovered. Right, the matzah here, because matzah is called lechem oni. Right. Lechem oni can have a few meanings. The word oni means poor. Okay, it reminds us of the, the poverty in Egypt. It also could mean... La'anot, la'anot means to talk about, so to talk. It's the bread of talking. So we're supposed to talk or answering, like la'anot, exactly, to answer. So we're supposed to be doing the talking, all the Haggadah, the entire story that we're going to tell, has to be told in front of the matzot, with the matzot uh, revealed in front of you. But there's one problem. The problem is we have a game to play. That, that makes the game. What's the game? Because we have a principle that whenever you hold up the cup of wine, we learned it here, that uh, there is an order of precedence between foods, brachos on foods. And really, the food that's <coughs> supposed to take precedence is, I'm just making a picture of three matzot, round ones. Okay? And these cannot be together. If you have holding up a cup of wine, 
you're going to be embarrassing the, the, the bread because the bread's supposed to be first. So you have to cover over the bread whenever you pick up the wine. And then when you put down the wine and you want to go back to telling the story, you have to uncover the matzahs. So many times we're picking up the wine, putting it down, picking up the wine, putting it down. Each time we're uncovering the matzahs and covering them back again. And this is what I call the sport of, of, uh, of the Seder. Is, uh, at every stage you have to check and that's what the instructions tell you. Now uncover the matzahs and say this. Okay, and now lift up your cup of wine. Well, you're going to have to cover the matzahs and say this. And then when you finish that passage, you put down the cup of wine, you have to uncover the matzahs again. So this is what, uh, I call it as a sport, but it, it, uh, it goes throughout the Haggadah, different sections. If we're raising the cup of wine, it cannot be, uh, uh, the matzahs should not be revealed. Oh, they, okay. That's why we cover them. Cover them, uncover, and cover, uncover, cover, uncover. It's a useful, it's a, useful tip. That's good to know. See, I understand there's method to the madness, as they say. Okay. Uh, arranging the Seder play, who's the biggest Kabbalist here? Who's the biggest Kabbalist amongst us? Yeah. No, 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 no. Definitely, no. Uh, definitely not. Definitely not. I think maybe... Uh... Thomas. Hmm, Thomas, read for us page 213. Oh, I thought you were going to ask a question. <laughs> but, okay. Four cups? Uh, no. Uh, 213, uh, number four. The arranging the Seder play. Wait, the plate. yeah. The Talmud also mentioned the Seder plate, but it does say that the matzah lettuce are also to and the cooked food. Are several of the person living in the Seder. The Rishonim and the Shulchan Aruch say that, that uh, all of these foods should be placed on a plate. However, it is not obligatory. The main thing is that these food foods be placed before the Seder leader. It's not so necessary to place the Seder plate before each participant or even before each married participant. Rather, it's enough to place the plate before the setter leader. Nevertheless, some of a custom to place matzot before the hand of every household, while the complete setter plate is placed in front of the setter leader only. Since a number of foods must be placed on the plate, the question arises. What is the best way to arrange them? There are several opinions on this matter. According to Rema, the principle <coughs> is that the herald food uh, appears in the setter. The closer to the setter leader it should be placed. Is done in order to avoid passing over the mitzvah. For example, if the matzot were closer to the leader than the carpas, he will have to pass over the matzot when reaching for the carpas, and this will, to, this will be somewhat disrespectful to the matzot. Therefore, according to Rema, one should place the carpas and so water closest to the leader, because these are hidden at the beginning, even before reciting the Akala. Next, uh, come the matzot, which are hidden at the start. <coughs> Then come the Mara and Haroset, because after eating Mara, we hit the Mara between the Haroset. Put us away on the plate that are the Zeroa and Hag, which commemorate the Pascha uh, and Hagi offering. And we don't eat e either of them really uh, so much. Some people eat the egg, but uh, um, usually you eat a different egg. But uh, in any case, that could be the farthest away because, however, um, where there's, there's other approaches that, uh, that, uh, different than the Rama. Go ahead. So I'll say that there is no need to be particular about arranging the silver plate in a manner that will prevent passing over the mitzvah, because such behavior is all improper when one is presented with a simultaneous opportunity to perform two mitzvahs. However, on the Seder night, each mitzvah has a specific time of its own, and there is no problem in passing over a mitzvah whose time for fulfillment has not yet arrived, in order to get to a food that must be hidden now. The cellar plate arrangement, based on a horizontal teaching, alludes to the ten Kabbalistic Sifirot. This arrangement is practiced today by most of our Hasidic, and even some not Hasidic Ashkenazim. Other Ashkenazim follow Revan, while still holders follow the Villagon. Many Haggadot contain diagrams of the cellar plate arrangement. And each of these very custom as a place in Jewish law. Okay, I'll read the footnote just to but they, they, give they, you a taste. There's an order on the cedar plate uh, according to the Sephirot? Exactly. Yeah. Oh. Footnote number one. Arizal's arrangement is as follows. The three matzot are on top. Ah, oh, we're already using vertical arrangements. We have to have a special kind of uh, two-story special plate to, to be able to do it like the Arizal suggests. But some people have that, and this is part of the Judaica that people um, spend a lot of money on, and uh, it, it really beautifies the mitzvah. The three matzot are on top, corresponding to the sphere of Chochmah Bina Vadat, 
Under the matzot on the right is the zero, corresponding to the sphere of chesed. The loving kindness. The egg on the left is corresponding to the gevura. Underneath them, in the middle, underneath them, again, so there's a third tier already. <laughs> in the middle is the maror, which corresponds to tiferet. Below the maror on the right is the haroset, corresponding to the netzach. On the left is karpas, corresponding to hod. And underneath them, in the center, is maror used for the korach sandwich, corresponding to the sphere of yesod. And the plate itself corresponds to the sphere of Malchut. This what comes from the Kafachayim, the Sephardic uh, Kabbalist. Um, what about the Kippah? Yes, so usually w- w- uh, when it comes to the Sephardic, we count 10. So okay, if you I use know, Keter, that means uh, number 11. I know. Like, in, some, in some situations, it's not... Um, if you don't, you usually uh, take out Dat. Exactly. Okay. So, exactly. Okay, so in this, in this uh, system, they're, they're not speaking of the Keter because they have the Dat in there. Okay. Keter is uh, perhaps... Crown is on your head. You're the king, right? It's linked to the next. Uh, yes, <laughs> maybe. Anyways, uh, anyway, there's the, the beginning of every Haggadah has, if one, if not two or three diagrams about uh, options, and uh, it always makes you sort of ask yourself to identify which am I? Am I Hasidic? Am I Ashkenazic? Am I Sephardic? What should I do? And then next year, when you take out the Haggadah and you arrange your Seder plate. Many of us, once again, say, what am I? Am I Sephardic? <laughs> Not everybody identifies so clearly with any of these traditions. Um, I'd say most, most Jews have no idea which to do. And uh, as I said, as Rav Malamud said, any of them are kosher. They're all kosher. But uh, you can, uh, it's good to choose a, a uh, tradition and identify. Maybe you should learn a little bit more about the Hasidic <coughs> customs, a little bit more about your family history and uh, make a decision. But uh, it's not the biggest decision that you make in the world. Uh, but if uh, this is all part of preparation for the Seder, okay? This usually happens before the Seder even started. You're setting the table. <coughs> Um, and it's, it's, uh, it's an exciting uh, part of getting ready for the Seder. Questions? Comments? Everything good? It doesn't have to be made out of silver. It doesn't have to have three floors, unless you want to really practice the Arizals, having the matzah on top. If you don't have a, a double-decker, you just put the matzah like, on top, like if you're looking at it in two dimensions. Uh, the matzah will be, you know, North, <laughs> or you know, to the to the farther away from you, and then the, all the other things, uh, just in two dimensions. If you don't have three dimensions, that's what you do. Yes, David. If you have an old seder plate that you're getting rid of, does it have to be? Dis- does it, is it, is nope. it like a mezuzah box or something else that's actually acquired any special status? So it's it's very interesting. The halacha, the halacha, the um, halacha says that there's special laws about how to dispose of holy items. Holy items are only three. We spoke about them. Stop. Good. Torah. Sefer Torah, mezuzah, and tefillin. Right. Sefer Torah, tefillin, and mezuzah. Only those do you have to dispose of with special sanctity, and you, we bury them. We basically don't. All the other mitzvot, even though they're very important mitzvot, tzitzit, lulav, shofar, once it's out of use, safarim have the name of God in them. So it's a little more complicated. So that's, uh, that you're not allowed to destroy either. But all the others, once the mitzvah has been done, you can dispose of it respectfully. Usually you put it in a plastic bag before you throw it out, but you're allowed to dispose of it in any way. People don't understand that distinction, and they clog up the Geniza with all sorts of talesim and uh, tzitzis, and uh, uh, that's not a good thing because uh, it's quite expensive to bury things. and quite expensive to, you know, uh, ca- yeah, to gather it all and to treat it properly. So you have to know that. So a Seder plate is tashmish, Mitzvah, it's something that you use to hold the mitzvah. You're holding the matzah, you're holding the maror, which is mitzvahs. So once it, you're finished with the mitzvah, you can dispose of it any way you like. Okay? Ideally, respectfully, of course. You know, uh, Don't put it in, uh, the, uh, uh, in the garbage pail where there's dirty diapers. But other than that, you know, it's, that doesn't have any, it doesn't retain any holiness. The status of holiness is only for Sefer Torah, Tefillin, and Mezuzah. Okay, I will see you other question as well. Yeah. I suppose if I buy a new one, so therefore, a new plate for the seder. Yeah. I I go to make uh, to uh, uh, go to the oh, well, to villa. Uh, yes, yeah. if yeah. it's if it's not made by Jews. Yeah. If
if it was. Yeah, the, uh, the second question is. If I if I, I I understand that was the last question that I put it in the someone who lead the setter the display. Most families have only one setter plate yeah, for the for the leader. The table like this, then that's right. We put in the front of each the the, the maror and the. So when it comes time to this. eat, then we bring out more marors. So everybody has, but. Um, for the for the two hours leading up to when you're actually going to eat, or when you're telling the story, usually most families have just one central seder plate. Although it's up to you, you can have. But everyone yeah. is dipping the, the. Yes, everybody is, and so you have to bring whenever there's a use of one of the items. You have to bring more, uh, you know, or, or pass around the uh, the around pass it around. Or... Either way is fine. Mm -hmm. um, it's up to you. It's a question of aesthetics and uh, convenience. Um, it's nice. So usually I think in most families when the kids get married, so they're like they have their own household, so then they get their own Seder plate. <coughs> or at least they get their own set of three matzahs. Also, there's so three, you know, um, we'll talk about why there's three matzahs. What do we have usually on a Shabbat? Two, two, two breads. Two breads, right. Two breads get switched off by three matzahs. So we'll talk about so that. three to make up for the fact that it's less than... No, that. not at all. There's three for many reasons, but we're going to get to it when we get to the, to, to the mitzvah of matzah. But we have to start with the, the seder. The seder, unfortunately... But what do you use as a mikvah for Kaleem and there's a little box to put coins in? What's a proper donation? No idea. What do you usually do? Oh, well, I have no box of, for coins near the mikvah kalim that I use. I don't think I've ever seen one, as a matter of fact. But uh, so, never if, never if, thought of it. If you, if, you, if, you own, if you own such an establishment, what would you recommend that people donate? Hmm. Well, I guess I don't know if it's an expensive thing to maintain and they're, they're trying to get some help from the community, or if it's merely looking for sadaka once they're getting that no, I don't think Bob gets idea. Okay. I have a question. Though, so yes, sir. When you're taking the, um, what do you say, the, the, the things off the Seder plate, or what goes on the Seder plate? What do you call the collection of things? The mitzvah items? Yeah. So when Listed you, when here. You, when you get to the point uh, at the... Um, Maror, for example. Yeah, so do you have to take it from the Seder plate, or can it be somewhere else on the table, and you can take it from Right, it's sort of a continuation of Amos' question. How do you work it? Really, what the items are there, they're there for using them. That's the whole point. That's how the custom came to have a Seder plate. It's just to put all the mitzvah items in one place and bring them to you. Those are the mitzvahs you're going to eat. So ideally, you should take the maror from the Seder plate. Take the uh, karpas from the Seder plate. Take the haroset. Oh, I didn't add. There's one more actually here. Uh, haroset as well. We didn't list that. It's one, two, three. Well, this is, you know, matzah doesn't really go on a plate, uh, on the same plate, unless you've got a double decker. So I would, I would do it like this. I would list that. Usually you have, the Seder plate has room for one, two, three, four, five uh, little cups or five little uh, slots for, for the different uh, objects. Uh, maybe six if you count this as separate. But uh, either way, uh, the how to arrange them, uh, you, you, there's a discussion. I think it's a good idea to take from the Seder plate. That's what it's for. Yeah, but if, it but if it's family not family enough family. for everybody, yeah. so you bring an, an additional plate. You bring additional maror out. Okay. You bring additional karpas out. You bring it out, whatever you need. You bring it out. Okay? The, yes? You said that the plate's a tradition, but it's a, strong, it's a long-standing one. What it, and it just occurred to me, what if you had, you know, like for... Um, um, for like entertaining, they have like these. It's almost like one plate, but each bit is a separate thing. Could you do that? As so like, you yeah, really it's like out? those airline meals. Sometimes they come in a tray, which is separated yeah, off. Not like, like that. Not like that. Not like that. With, with dips. Even so bigger. I understand. With, yeah. I understand. I understand. Yeah, great. Like that. You can do anything you want. Yeah, uh, as you wish. Sure. Be creative, and uh, make your own. By all means. Yeah. And uh, all right. Let's begin. The begin. Uh, the first thing on the Seder night <laughs> is Kadesh. Kadesh. Now, how many steps are there in the Haggadah? Are you ready to write them down? Are you ready to write them down? Oh, he knows it off by heart. How do you know? Because I went to kindergarten. 
Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, fair. Karpas, yahats, magi, rosa, mozi, mata, maror, kore, shukhan, ore, sapun, bore, hale, Beautiful. We even everybody have grab. Before we do in our family, so we get to, we get to each section. Now we sing until we get to the part that's like, okay, stop. That's my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Yeah. Let's take a picture. Yeah. Yeah. Take a we always sang the song right before. That's That was what we sang right it's before. before. Let's take a look at the other one. 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 Let's take a one. Anybody else? Just pass Here's a Mahon Mir one. Really? Come on, guys, pass it down. This looks like it's in French. Just give it to the French department. Sorry? Mahon Mir, we look at you. Open up to the first page. What do you see on the first page? Come on, wait with me. Wait with me. Open up to the first page. State of Israel, 25th No, before that. <laughs> it should start with B'dikat Chametz. Most Haggadot start with B'dikat Chametz. Does yours not have that? No, not. Have another one. Here's the Shik Haggadah with amazing <laughs> pictures. Oh, I want this. Oh, Arthur Shik, beautiful, yeah. I got, I got one like that for my Bar Mitzvah. I have a set of those at home. Yeah. Okay. After so you say there chametz, you have the bracha there. What happens next? Then you have say there amiat korban pesach sometimes, and then you look for something like this, a list. Look for a list of the different stages of the Haggadah. Does everybody find it? Whoever doesn't have one here, you take this one. Here, you take this one. Do we have to keep these Haggadahs closer? Yes. Yeah, yes. Um, Did you find all those Oreos? Yes. yes. You're yes. Happy to you have to put those before that. Before that. Before that. Is there any, is there any other place on the table? Yes. I'll take it. I'll take it. Do you have the say there? Uh, yeah. There you go. That's what they have. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Hirsch wants to remind you that Hirsch is going to be a little fair. My grandparents. Hmm? Oh, yeah, the argument started right. this, that. You could, you could talk about it with Hirsch. Wait, you, you, don't, you, don't know this, you don't know the things he said? I don't care what he says, bro. He wants us to convert to Catholicism. I don't care what he says or does or anything. Zionism is more important than the place. Did you find your list? Yes. He said it's more important than Torah. Easy does it. In this generation, it was. Hirsch, take a look. Nothing is more important than Torah. Nothing. Uh, do we have another? We found the list. Everyone is in the list. We have another Haggadah. Which one? Hashem is. Yes, Rav. Rav, do we have another Haggadah? We have Torah, of course, many. I thought that you had a Haggadah in the Shem Torah. Oh, my God. And then Hashem is before Torah. Take this one. Hashem, then Torah, then everything else. Okay. That's the children's pictures. Everybody ready? Moshe, take it away. Follow along. Kadesh. It does have it. This one? Sure. The very first page. Oh, oh so he's missing. Uh, we have to long to leg. Yeah. Yeah. I like to <coughs> stretch over ah, there. So. I think it's before the Kadesh. Kadesh. Oh, Moshe, go ahead. Kadesh. Urchatz. Kapas. Yachatz. Magi. Ratsa. Motsi. Matsa. Maror. Korech. Shulchan. Orech. Tzafum. Barech. 
Count them. How many stages are there? These are the stages. Of, it's called the order. They say there. Say there means order. Fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, the problem is that it, that way, if you count it that way, you only get to fourteen. And fifteen is a nicer number. Why? There are fifteen steps in the temple. Going to go up from one stage to the other. There's fifteen shir hamalot in the in the book of Tehillim yeah. for each of those uh, special song for each one of the fifteen steps. Of the Amida a week. Is that right? Yes. That's an interesting. Interesting tidbit. comparison to the temple just because the program is on you dial it elsewhere, but you. Ah, uh, uh, that's tough. That's tough. Yeah. Seven mincha and one musaf. Very cool. Yeah, fair. In any case, uh, the standard number also it's a little bit of a kabbalistic number of fifteen. The 15 stages of the Seder, this is it. That's why it's called Seder night. Because the rabbis gave us a system for putting together all those mitzvot. Not only on the Seder plate. The plate is the um, the background. What's that called in the, on a play? Someone is in charge of the, you know, setting up the stage. Tifora in Hebrew. What's that in English? Um, narrator? No, the, the like, uh, I don't know. I can't think of the word. I don't know. The, the setting up the way the stage looks and the, uh, the props. Uh, in any case, this is the Seder plate, and then we have the order, the order here. The Seder, uh, Kadesh is for what? What do you do at the stage of Kadesh? Kadesh, <coughs> Mekadesh. Kiddush! <laughs> Urchatz, what do you do at Urchatz? What's, what's the Urchatz? Wash your hands. Karpas. What's Karpas? The dipping of the. Uh, We're going to talk about it. This is a certain vegetable we dip. Yachatz. What's Yachatz? Right, we break the matzah. We'll talk about it. Kadesh Urchatz, Karpas, Yachatz. You have to know it off by heart by tomorrow. Moshe, sing it again for us. Kadesh. <laughs> Kadesh Urchat, Karpahas Yachat, Magid. Stop! Stop! Magid, what's Magid? That's telling of a story. About six hours too long. <laughs> right? We, we said, Vehigadita. What's the book called? Hagada. Magid is the major section where we tell the story. Okay? Magid. Finally, when you finish telling the story, Matchil Begnut, Mesayim Beshevach, the four sons, the four questions. The ten plagues, the midrash, everything that you know, the, the the splitting of the sea. Oh, when you finish the whole story, all that's in one word, magid. Right, that's the magid section of the fifteen. You with me? What comes next? Uh, Rachta. Rachta. What is Rachta? That's uh, washing the hands with the blessing. Washing the hands also. It's the same word as urchatz. Urchatz and rachza. They both uh, come from the same root. It means to wash. So we wash our hands twice. What's We're going to discuss. What's the conjugation difference? Not important right now. Okay. Rachza. So uh, what's after rachza? Motzi. 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 is taking out. Or what does it stand for? The bracha. Baruch Ata Hashem Elokeinu Melech Haolam. Hamotzi. Hamotzi Aretz. The make the motzi. Make the bracha of hamotzi, right? That's the bracha on the bread. And we don't have bread. So what do we have? Matzah. Moshe, there actually are two stages. Why? Because there's two reasons we eat bread on the Seder night. One is because it's a Yom Tov meal. We have to have bread to, to make, like at every meal, you have to have bread. <coughs> every Yom Tov to, that you want yeah, to yeah. set as a, as, a, as a ritual meal, you have to have bread. So we have to have the motzi. That's one reason to have bread. The second reason to have bread is because it's a mitzvah to eat matzah. This night, it's a special mitzvah to eat matzah. So most people say you have two olive measurement sizes of matzah. One, actually we have three matzahs we said. You use the top matzah for the motzi, just for the regular bread type of eating, and the middle matzah you use for your second kazayit, um, your second measurement of, of bread that you eat, actual for the mitzvah of matzah. Don't forget to lean. <laughs> okay? Motzi matzah, what's next? Uh, 
Maror. We eat the maror. Korech. Korech. The sandwich, right? Shulchan Aruch. What's Shulchan Aruch? Isn't that book over there? Yeah. The Shulchan Aruch. So table. set table, right? So obviously, the original I think was set table. So what does it mean, set table? We set the table beforehand. No, no, no. What what happens at Shulchan Aruch? We bring all the food. Finally, you know that I told you there's a movie. When do we eat? No. <laughs> That's it. Shulchan Aruch is when we eat. Okay. <laughs> even apply to your house, Maybe you're saying how you start off in the living room, so you probably have the seder played out there. You probably mm-hmm. don't have the whole meal. Correct. Yeah. Correct. That's right. After we wash, we move, uh, we, uh, we have that mozi. Usually we move to the table, it makes it easier to eat that way. Um, anyway, Shulchan Aruch is when we eat. Next, what's the next stage? Safun. Which Safun. Is, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the hidden matzah, because God found the hidden. Safun means hidden, uh, excellent. Means Safun hidden. means hidden, and that's when we eat the afikoman at the end of the meal. Sort of like dessert. Safun means hidden? Safun. Safun is north. Safun is north, because Safun is hidden. hidden. Uh, maybe. Maybe the, the sun is never going through the north. Goes through the south, right? Maybe. Maybe. Safun means hidden. And we have the Afikoman. And then Bareich. What's Bareich? Birkat Amazon. And what's left? Hallel. Hallel. We have to sing the Hallel. And then Nirza is sort of like it's sort of like at the end of the Shmon Esrei, we have a section called Ritze. Find favor right. in our prayers. So we ask God that uh, all of our Seder, all of our Seder, all of these 15 stages should be uh, finding favor in his eyes. Sing it one more time, Moshe. Some people say that it's a mitzvah to recite these 15 at the beginning. It's not just the table of contents. This is an ancient tradition. These 15 stages, the rabbis designed this with tremendous care. And um, you could even find in some of the Haggadot, which you're holding, commentary on the bottom, maybe some of them explain the deeper meaning of this progression, of this order. Ready? Go for it. Everybody has to follow along and sing. It's a nice little ditty. Many families have a little bit of a different tune. Other tunes, some people just recite it, but um, that is how we open up the evening with telling you, like when you go to a play, you get a program huh, or a concert, right? You get a program. Mm-hmm. First, where they're going to play Vivaldi's first, and then you know, and then the the concerto uh, from from Haydn, right? So first, we have Mozi Matza, and then we have Hallel afterwards. Where each stage, we have a plan. Or you go to a wedding, sometimes they give you the, the menu. right? So here you don't have quite the menu. You have more than that. You have the content of, uh, you know, or you go to a conference. Who's speaking first? And what themes are we going to talk about? This is the order of the night. Um, memorize it by tomorrow, 9 a.m. There's a test. Okay? Everyone's going to have to stand up and perform. Everybody songs. has to stand up on their chairs and sing. This fifteen words. Okay, if you, if you smile nicely, I may not be so mean, but uh, stop here. Stop here. Tough.